So what I want to do here is just give you an idea on how to create and analyze these two to the K with replicate designs in Minitab. So this is number one from um, a homework that I gave you, and I'm just going to go over it just so you can see what we're doing. Um, so just some background here, an engineer is interested in the effects of cutting speed, tool geometry, and cutting angle on the life of a machine tool. Two levels of each factor are chosen, and three replicates of the two to the three factorial design is run. We have the results here below. You can see we have our levels denoted by plus minus, and then we have our response for the three replicates. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to answer the questions that you see here. So we're first going to estimate the factor effects. We're going to take a look just to see which ones we think might be non-zero. Um, then part B, we're going to use the significance test to confirm what we thought in part A. Then we're going to reduce our model based on um, an alpha type risk of 0.05. And then finally, we will um, take a look at the effect plots and decide what levels do we want to set A, B, and C to to get our optimal result. Which, of course, in this case, because we're talking about machine life hours, we're looking for a maximum. So let's go and take a look at how we input this into Minitab. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create the design. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up here to Stat and then down here to DOE. Now notice we have a bunch of different potential types of designs we can create. What you want to do is you want to go to Factorial. Now you want to click on Create Factorial Design. Here notice we have a bunch of different options. What you want to choose is two-level factorial. The reason that we choose two-level factorial over, say, general full factorial is because there are some different things that we can get in terms of output from two-level factorials that we won't get from a general full factorial. Now, the next thing we need to do is look at the number of factors. If you go back and look at the question, there were three factors, A, B, and C. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this at three. Now we're going to click on Designs. And you can see we want to click full factorial because we have eight runs in the design. We also have rep three replicates, so we want to have the number of replicates be three. Let's not worry about center points or blocks or any of those kinds of things at this point. Click OK. Click OK. Now, there's a few different things that you can do from here. If you want to go in and change these to the actual names of the factors, you can. And if you want to change these to the actual low and high levels of the factors, you can do that as well. We're not going to mess with that right now. Also, you want to click on options. Now, I gave you the design in standard order, right? We talked about Yates order in the slides. What you want to do is you want to make sure randomized runs is unchecked. If you leave that checked, the runs are going to all be in random order. And now you have to go through and try to find the right runs and match them up with the right responses. By not putting them in in randomized order, you can just um, copy and paste. Now, in the real world, you want to randomize this as much as possible when you're actually creating a design to run. Okay, But for right now, because you have it in standard order, we're going to not randomize. Click OK. And now we pretty much have everything we need. Click OK again. And notice here, Let's go up here, let's go to view, and then we'll look at data only. Now notice here, we have our design, right? If you look at the first eight, it's one two to the three, the second eight is another two to the three, the third eight is another two to the three. Now we need to get the responses. Um, I copied them to the clipboard, now we'll paste them here. Notice we have each response for each design next to each other, we need to get them stacked. So we'll cut and paste here, cut and paste here. Now, notice I did it in order, but in terms of which replicate belongs with which data, it doesn't really matter because they're all the same design. Now that we have all the data in, we're going to go to Analyze. So you're going to go Stat, DOE, Factorial, and then go down here to Analyze Factorial Design. Go here. Double click to put Y in as our response. Now we're going to click on terms. Notice we have all the terms, all the potential terms up to ABC. 
Notice also we have this thing called where it says include terms in the model up through order, and I have three. If I change this to two, we have all the main effects in two ways. If I change this to one, we have just the main effects. We have replicates, so we want to test everything. So I'm going to leave that as is. Click OK. Um, there's a bunch of other different things you can do here. We're not going to worry about those just yet. So click OK. Now, if we go to view again and just look at output, now you can see here we've got our coefficient table, model summary, and analysis of variance. Okay. If we go up here and look at our T table or our coded, you can see here are the effects. So let's answer number one or part A. Here are the effects. What looks large to me is B, A, C, and probably C. Okay. Now remember, what effects seem to be large is really based on opinion. Now let's do part B where we use significance to make that decision. Go here and remember what we're looking for is, is p-values that are less than 0 0.005. Or 0 0.05, excuse me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go from the bottom up. The three-way is not significant, BC is not significant, AC is significant, AB is not significant, C and B are both significant. So the effects that are significant based on our results are B, C, those two main effects, and the interaction AC. Okay, now let's move on and talk about part C where we reduce our model. We only want to keep the terms that we consider significant, but we still have to consider hierarchy, which means even though main effect A is not significant, because interaction AC is significant, then we're going to keep A in the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up here to stat, DOE, factorial, analyze. Now we're still analyzing Y, but now we're going to click on terms. These double arrows move everything left and right. Let's click on the double arrow to take everything out. What we're going to keep in is A, B, C, and AC. Now remember, even though A isn't significant, because it's part of AC, it's got to stay. The rest of them all have p-values less than 0.05. So let's click OK. Let's click OK. And now we have our results again. Notice here we have terms that are just less than 0 0.05, of course, except for A. Um, now we can move on to part D and basically say what levels do we want to set A, B, and C to to get our maximum result. Now, in order to do this, we're going to create effect plots. When we create these effect plots, we, we want to first start out with interaction effects. So we're going to create an interaction effect plot for AC. So let's go to stat, DOE, factorial, factorial plots. Notice we have all three in here. All I want in here first is A and C. Click on graphs. I want just the interaction plot, and I'm going to display full matrix, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Click OK. Click OK. Now notice here we have two plots. Okay, We have A on this vertical axis, we have C on this vertical axis, and inside the plot for the C vertical axis, the blue one is negative one for A, the red one is one for A. On this one, blue is negative for C, Red is positive for C. Now, let's look at this plot. We're looking for the point with the highest value, which is this one. Notice here, we go down, that's C. So we set C equal to 1, and we set A equal to negative 1. Now, let's go to this plot. This is the largest point. We set A equal to negative 1, and since C is red, we set C equal to 1, which matches. So again, we're going to set A to negative 1 and C to 1. Now we need to figure out what to set B at. We're going to go back to graph, or excuse me, back to stat, go down to DOE, 
go to factorial, go back to factorial plots. Now we want to get rid of everything that's in there and only bring in B. Go to graphs, create the main effect plot, click OK. We set B to the positive one. So we're going to set B to positive one based on that plot. We're going to set A to negative 1 and C to 1. Okay, thank you for watching this video. If anybody has any questions, please let me know.